This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Smith versus Williams. It's my understanding, Ms. Smith, that you are suing Mr. Williams and his neighborhood Mart grocery store for injuries you sustained when you slipped and fell in his store. You're asking this court to award you $110,000 for past medicals, $50,000 for future medicals, $500,000 for pain and suffering for a total award of $660,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Williams, you believe that this is not your fault. If Ms. Smith had been paying attention, she would not have been injured in your store. That's correct, Your Honor. All right, well, let's get into the legal sauce. Now, how did you come to this store that day? Well, Your Honor, I went to the neighborhood, Mart, and I have to tell you, the store is not what it used to be, but saving money is just so important to me that even though the quality's gone downhill, I was willing to continue to shop there. Tell me about the neighborhood, Mart. How long have you owned this store? Yes, Your Honor, I've owned this particular store for just a little bit. I just purchased it from the uh, previous owner. Okay. Uh, I bought the, uh, I own the neighborhood mod in three other stores. Uh, I believe in, in community. I believe in hard work. This is my meat and potatoes. I love this. I, I was a kid. I used to run up the grocery store aisles back and forth like a kid in a candy store. It's just what I do. Well, when uh, I was growing up, the Neighborhood Mart was the anchor of the community. Is that how your story is? That's what I like to think it is. That's what the community, th uh, that's how the community looks at us. So, Ms. Smith, how did this happen? Well, Your Honor, I was going up and down the aisles with my cart, and I went to the dairy aisle, and I grabbed a tub of sour cream, and it slipped out of my hands and spilled on the floor. And so uh, the whole time I was texting with my husband, he was letting me know things that we needed. And so I, I took a picture and sent it to him because I was frustrated and said, look what you made me do. You're distracting me. Let me finish and I'll be home as soon as I can. And I was waiting on the checkout line when he texted me one more time and he said, could I please bring home some coffee creamer? What did you do then? So I went back to the dairy aisle to get the creamer and then I, I slipped in the sour cream that I had spilled earlier, and I, I fell, and I, I, as I was falling, I, I honestly couldn't believe it was still there. It had been so long since I'd been there. So you it slipped was, in the sour cream that you had spilled earlier? Yes, and I, I was embarrassed then, and I'm embarrassed now, but as a result of this injury, I have this severe cervical fracture that I had to have a fusion on my neck for. And as a result, I can barely move my head from left to right. I, I cannot even do my daily routine. I can barely take care of my twins. I have to have help at all times. It is physically and emotionally and in every way just painful and unbearable. So, Mr. Williams, Ms. Smith falls on one of your products on your floor. Yes, sir. Um, why isn't this your fault? She never reported the spill. We didn't know, know about this until after the plaintiff had fallen. We, I, I remember this day. It, it was a busy day. I got a, a note over the PA that said that someone needed assistance. So I rushed down to the dairy aisle, and there was Miss Smith on the, on the ground, being attended to by one of my employees. I rushed over there. I heard her insisting that she was fine. She says, I'm fine. She stands up. She goes to leave. I said, wait, 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 wait. We got to fill out an incident report. And I'm terribly sorry that this happened, but this is not our fault. So if she was going to handle this properly, what was she supposed to do after she f spilled the sour cream? Well, she, she would have let us know first that there was a, there was a spill. Well, how did well, she do that? Your Honor, I have to tell you, he should have cleaned that up oh. for 20 minutes to go by, maybe even more. And for that store not to be watching the floor Honor, and have th their employees this, this, cleaning this, and uh, checking Honor, on a regular basis is so outrageous. You it is should so have reported the spill, Your Honor. Ms. Smith, take a, a deep breath. <sighs> your Honor, she never reported the spill. Well, what would have happened had she reported it? If she would have... <laughs> Your Honor, Honor. We, we have systems and protocols in place for this. You submitted yeah. your protocol to yes, this sir. court. Yeah, absolutely. Display signs to inform the customer spill has occurred. That would be the, our yellow hazard cone. Okay. Have someone block off to alert customer and block off the entire area. That way nobody goes near the, the spill. Okay. So we can't have these slip and falls. Sweep up any broken glass or, or mop immediately anything that would have caused any kind of hazard, any kind of slip and fall. Okay. Keep the wet floor signs up until, the, until it's completely dry. So had you known this is what your employees me, would have done? Me, I would well, have done it myself as your, a store owner. That's your Honor. responsibility. No one's, no one's too big to, to sweep up the floor and mop the floor. That your is Honor. the responsible way Absolutely. to do it. Absolutely, yes, Your Honor. Yes. Your Honor, I, yes, I hear... I, 
I hear what Mr. Williams is saying, but there really should be a step ahead of those one, two, three, four, and that should be that you pay enough attention to the floor of your store while people, especially at the busiest time, that you're paying attention. Somebody else could have spilled well, well, how, Wait, wait it's a minute. How are you saying he ought to pay attention when you spilled it? You're looking at it. I don't work for the store, Your Honor. He has a duty. In a general sense, that is true. But it's also true in a general sense that each and every one of us, every customer in a store, you've got to look out for your own safety, especially if you did the spill. Your Honor, why didn't somebody else who, somebody else went down the dairy aisle and didn't see that that happened? There wasn't anyone else who could report it? And there's an employee why there to help me off the floor and he didn't spill. see the sour cream? No one's going to walk behind That's you and report ridiculous. your spill. We're going to have order in this courtroom. Yes, Your Honor. That's not what I'm saying. And, and I don't mean to beat up on you. I'm trying to make this make common sense yes. for me. And, and I hear what you're saying. And you know what? If I if I didn't have a sick child at home and so much else going on in my life, to tell you the truth, if somebody else had spilled that and I saw it, I might do that myself. But when you own a store, you have a duty to care for your patrons. I have never had an incident And this before. never happened before when the mart was owned by someone else. I have never, never had ever saw a like spill. This in my store, in, in my life. I have four stores. This is my third store. Well, you've had spills before. But never had anybody slip and fall on it, ever. But I've never had anybody walk into my store before, hit sour cream, walk around my store, then slip and fall on the sour cream, then leave, go to their car, and then want $660,000 from me. Your I've Honor, never had that either, Your Honor. Your Honor, I don't think it's unreasonable. When, when I got picked up off the floor, I was shocked, I was embarrassed, and the- You were also the, fine. Excuse me, but I'm not done. The car is not that far from the front door, and it, so it took me a few extra minutes to realize what happened to me because I didn't respond to him in that very moment. That's yes, completely unreasonable, how dare you? What's unreasonable? Well, well that's not that uncommon, y'all, really. In these personal injury cases, sometimes people are badly injured, but yes. the shock of the circumstance they get up and get in their car and go home and die. Oh. So it's the adrenaline that gets them past the initial impact of an injury. Now here, we'll figure this out, but just because someone says, hey, I'm okay, and they get up, get their groceries, and go home, doesn't mean they're not badly hurt, and we see this. Your Honor, my carts are the open mesh wire, wire type, the yes, type sir. you can see right through, through the bottom, through the sides, through the top. Right. There's no way she missed that spill if she was walking where she was going. That she was, spilled it and then walked around the store after she took a picture of it. That was 20 minutes earlier. It wasn't 20 and not minutes. to mention, the picture we're seeing there is an empty grocery cart. And by the time this happened, I had a full grocery cart. I couldn't see the bottom. I was looking took at the coffee back, creamer. Took it back to the picture the of The coffee Smith. creamer was eye level. I could not possibly have seen the floor. Ms. Smith, tell me about your injuries. Well, so like I said, the, the arm is fractured and I have this this cervical fracture in, in my neck, and I had a fusion. And because of that fusion, I cannot turn my head fully left or fully right. And my, my mobility is so limited. And I have these adorable twin girls. You can only imagine how I have to pick them up, turn, twist, bend, and it's nearly impossible. I can't do anything without help. I can frankly barely go to the bathroom without help. I see that you have submitted to this court $110,000 just in your past medicals. Yes, sir. It's clear from the medical records that you submitted that you went through a pretty invasive surgery too. Extremely, Your Honor. And you're asking this court for $50,000 for your future medicals, right? Yes, Your Honor, I understand. I'm gonna need a great bit of therapy and, and other things ahead. I want to understand the nature of your injuries and what the future looks like from a medical perspective. So this court has consulted Dr. Hadari Brooks. Sheriff Matt, will you get Dr. Brooks to come in and help us out? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you so much. You're the best, man. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Dr. Brooks, how are you? I'm good. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Can you explain the plaintiff's injuries? Sure. There are seven cervical vertebrae in your neck. She basically broke the bottom one, if you will, of the seven. And she sustained what is called a burst fracture, meaning that the fracture is in multiple pieces, as opposed to, say, a compression fracture, which tends to be in just one or two pieces. How do you treat that, Doc? So the importance of that burst fracture is those fragments can go backwards and sometimes injure the spinal cord which can make a person 
paralyzed. So what you have to do with surgery, and we have a video here that's going to help illustrate this point, is you have to first, this white substance is the disc that sits between the bones. We have to remove that and then place a new disc, which is either artificial or bone, to maintain the space between the two bones, if you will. And then we want to fuse the bones so that they can't move and protect our break. In that case, we have to add a plate and screws, as is illustrated here. So it's quite an invasive surgery that's required when you have to do this cervical fusion case. So that hardware is inside her body. Absolutely. And that How long will it be there? Ideally, her entire life. What are the future limitations, if any? So you would have limited range of motion because you have a segment that's fused that's not meant to be fused. Then you have a much higher risk of arthritis in the associated segments above and below your fusion. And that is something that may require in-depth surgery in the future say 10, 12 years from now. So this road of healing isn't over yet? Absolutely not, no. Doctor, thank you so much. You are released. We appreciate you. Thank you. Ms. Smith, you are asking this court to award you a half a million dollars for your pain and suffering. Tell me about that. Why I should give you that amount of money? To tell you the truth, what's happened to me is so life-changing that there really isn't even an amount of money that would cover it. What I'm asking for is the bare minimum of what I'm gonna need in terms of you fixing- You spilled the sour Excuse cream. Excuse me, but I'm trying to answer the judge about what my life is gonna look like in the future. You spilled it and you didn't Ex report it. We were all there Your five Honor, to seven I'm sorry, is but our I would business like you time. to understand- Folks, we need order that. in this court. Your Honor. Listen, I certainly understand you've been horribly injured. Okay, that's beyond dispute. But you seem to quickly throw the blame to them, throw the blame to them, throw the blame to them, and not one ounce to you for not reporting this. I certainly would have reported it if would there have. was. Do you if, wish you would have? I can't even say that I wish I would have, because there was literally nobody to report it to. If I could have, I looked. Mr. Williams, I'm going to start a sentence, and I want you to finish it for me. This is not my fault because I didn't spill the sour cream. I didn't report. I, it wasn't. I didn't report the sour cream. I didn't even know about the sour cream until after the plaintiff fell, Your Honor. How how am I supposed to, to fix something I don't know about? This was a blatant spill. It was right in the middle of the floor. If it was Had so she been blatant, watching where she was going, she would have seen it. If it was so it was blatant, huge, you why saw didn't the somebody picture, else see Your Honor, it and report it? It's not it. plausible to me. that the plaintiff did not see. The sour cream, sir. I see that. I did not see it. I reached for the Well, you creamer. have acted as a responsible business owner in putting systems and protocol for cleaning the floors. That's, that's a very good thing to do, and all businesses should do that. Yeah. Folks, I think I've heard enough. I'm ready to render my decision. In every personal injury case, the plaintiff, you, Ms. Smith, you've got to prove that Mr. Williams did something wrong that caused your injury. Here, you've put up evidence that although you spilled this sour cream, that you left, and when you came back, you expected that it would be cleaned up, and you slipped in the sour cream that you spilled. You believe it's his responsibility to make sure that his employees go and see this kind of thing and clean it up. Had he done his job, you never would have been hurt. Mr. Williams, you believe that this is, makes no sense. You spilled the sour cream, you slipped in the sour cream. How could that be my fault? Plus, I'm a responsible businessman. I have actual systems and protocols in place to take care of this kind of thing if you let me know that there is a problem. Well, this case is an intersection of the law and common sense. Common sense says, if you spilled the sour cream and you slip in the sour cream, you should never be allowed in a courtroom. <laughs> this verdict will shock some people, but it is what the law commands. I was looking at the text messages from Miss Smith to her husband. 22 minutes went by. And timing is very important in the law, even when you don't have notice. If your systems,
periodically go through, they not only clean, but they inspect. Uh -huh. 22 minutes of this stuff being on the floor is simply too long to be there. Oh. Your folks should have caught it, and I believe that them not getting it is your proving the wrong that caused your harm. Oh. I find in your favor, oh and I'm going to give you everything you asked for. You ask this court for past medical expenses of $110,000, future medical expenses of $50,000, and pain and suffering of $500,000 for a total award of $660,000. That's my final verdict, and this matter is adjourned. Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Terry Crouppen has to say. This verdict is controversial because Mrs. Smith slipped on sour cream she herself spilled. Here the defendant had procedures in place to clean up spills, but none to quickly discover them. This spill was on the floor for 22 minutes. Judge Gino found this was an unreasonable amount of time not to be discovered and cleaned up. 